Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I hope you can hear it in my voice. I am feeling much better. It's still a little crazy, I know, but we're going to deal with it. But guys, I've missed you and we're going to dive into, ready? Ready? Revenge! There, I did it. Still a little, um, I don't know, hoarse, but <laughs> getting better. And you guys have been so sweet. Thank you for all the lovely messages. I, I am. I'm getting much better. Thank you so much. It was just a stupid cold, but I, I'm on the mend. So enough about me. Let's talk about Dumb and Dumber, shall we? <laughs> Dumb and Dumberton. Thank you guys so much for being here and all the lovely comments and all the support. I want to say a huge thank you. I've had so many of you join Patreon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Patreon is my bonus service where I put up extra content. Still putting up a ton of content here, so if it's not your thing, I totally get it. Don't worry about it. But if it is your thing, check it out because Jay and I have had so much fun. We've recorded so many bonus episodes now with Harry and Schmeg, and we get into it over there. So check that out, patreon.com. I will be thanking my executive producers. I have 22 of you guys at the time of recording, which is crazy, and I appreciate you all. And if you're like, Jen, what's an executive producer? Well, check out patreon.com, and you'll find out. But thank you all for being here. Let's dive into, ready, revenge. So we pick up on chapter 32, transit. Oh, you guys, this is where it got, I just, this book is so good. I love it so much. Tom Bauer does such a great job. You know, I always sing his praises, but it's well-deserved. He wrote this so well, and he's, it's so interesting. So he gets into the isolation of Harry and Meghan. Remember, they had gone to Vancouver Island. We talked about that in the last episode. So they were, by them going over there, Tom Bauer is talking about how they're uh, outrage was increasing during this time. I'm sure it was. They could just stew over on that island, right? And they started to adopt the word abandoned. They were feeling abandoned. Never mind that they're grown-ups that left their position, but they were feeling abandoned. They decided that they needed negotiation from Palace, and it, they also decided it would not be discreet. And by they, I'm sure Tom Bauer was talking about Megan. Um, <laughs> I feel like, again, Harold is eating crayons, so whatever Ma Megan tells him to do, that's what he does. He's like, are we outraged? We're outraged. Okay, I'm outraged. Okay, so I don't get political here. I'm just going to read a quote by Tom Bauer. Take this how you will. They were sure that the Sussex brand offered the same opportunities reaped by the Obamas. The idea being that they would give speeches, make a crap load of money, write some books. There you go. First step should be an Oprah interview. Hmm, where have we heard this before? In case you didn't listen to earlier episodes of our deep dive, which, hello, go back and listen to those. The Oprah thing started coming up right before they got married. And Megan said, it's not the right time now, but don't you worry, I'll be talking to you soon. Well, it's soon. <laughs> Harry believed his family would accept their, quote, demands when leaving. God, of course he did. The gall of these two, of course they think all their demands would be met, and it's totally, totally, totally a reasonable thing to do. So many of you guys have pointed out in the comments, I love you all so much, you write the best comments, but you pointed out things like, what job lets you make demands, leave, and still insist that you get a salary, a company car, and all the perks? No job. It doesn't work like that. They left their job. They should have left their titles and everything else behind. So after several phone calls with Charles, Harry was told he needs to start sending his proposals in writing. There's so many things that I would like to be a fly on the wall for, and that is one of them. I'd like to hear old Harold whining to Charles about how hard he's had it. Um, and uh, hear Charles' responses, like, you have to put that in writing. According to the book, the Sussexes' expectation was to, quote, retain their titles, their privileges, their income while living in Canada, that they would keep Frogmore. Now, remember, they just spent two point whatever million on renovations on that thing. They would enjoy <laughs> round-the-clock protection while costing the British taxpayers annually 2.5 million pounds. And their demand was to receive 1.5 million in annual income from the Duchy of Cornwall account. Remember, that's the account that funds both, I think, his household, William's household, and uh, it was something that Charles was over that he ended up putting William over. 
So in exchange, <laughs> I mean, just the nerve of these people. Can you imagine? In exchange, they would, quote, occasionally return to Britain, but otherwise represent the monarchy from Canada. So they had all this list of demands, and that's what they were willing to give. And um, yeah, I, I, what? <laughs> What is it that they're offering there? Because I don't hear any benefit for the royal family or Canadians or anybody for that matter, except for Harold and Fraud. They're getting all the benefit, of course. It just seems to be keeping with their theme of let's do, you know, let's do none of the work, none of the responsibilities. But boy, do we want those titles and that money that comes with it. That'll, that'll be great. And the protection and stuff, right? All the advantages, none of the actual, you know, work that comes with it. So again, Charles is like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> We're going to need that in writing. So Harry decides, you know what? I'm going to go to Gran. I'm going to go talk to the queen. And she said, no, 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 no. You're going to have to work that out with your dad. I love the queen so much. So this was after Christmas 2019. Dan Wooten got a tip that the Sussexes were going to leave Britain. When Harry f found out that Dan Wooten knew, he blew a gasket. Again, that seems to be his thing. Anytime he can get mad at the press, he's happy about it. Apparently, it gives him purpose. So he demanded, I'm using Joey's quotation marks on that one, uh, that the palace take action against the sun. That's who Dan Wooden worked for at the time. So Harry was getting more paranoid. He couldn't fathom that it could be a member of his own team that's leaking this info. He assumed it was part of Charles or William's team that was leaking that they they were planning to leave. Never mind the fact that it was true, right? That they actually were planning to leave. He'd rather just be mad at the press because nothing's ever their fault. I sound like a broken record, but that just is a repeating pattern with these two. Nothing is ever their fault. Let's be mad at everybody else. So Wooten at the time was a New Zealand holiday and he was trying to get the Sun to publish this information. Well, they wouldn't do it. Uh, there's a reason I'm bringing this up where it's going to come back full circle. So from here, we go into January of 2020. It was actually January 6th. Harry and Meghan landed at Heathrow. They left Archie behind in Vancouver. Harry had planned to go directly to Sandringham for dinner with the Queen. But to his dismay, it was canceled. Well, no wonder. She was dealing with a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> and she didn't have time for his whiny ass. And so... He called to ask for another date that week, and she replied that her diary was full. Huh, imagine that. The queen's whole wide world didn't revolve around the suck asses, right? <laughs> yes, I'm a child, but I'm okay with it. He then spoke to Edward Young, who is the queen's private secretary. Harry threatened to announce his plans to leave Britain, and Young was like, are you crazy? Why would you do that before meeting with the queen? But, you know. Harry and Meghan, petulant children, they don't think things through. They just think by acting like this and demanding things, you know, that's going to work. That's going to win them favor. Look how that's worked out. Make it make sense, right? Make it make sense. Harry believed that the queen was, quote, receiving really bad advice. Now, this is what really pissed me off in the Netflix documentary and in his book. By saying that, he is taking power away from the queen. He's pretending like she wasn't... The decision maker, that she was being fed things, and he even spun a story where she wasn't talking. It was his brother and dad yelling at him and stuff. And and you know what? If that's the case, then she's probably like, yeah, he probably needs a little bit of yelling at to straighten up because it's just ridiculous. So the following night, the son, coming back to that Wooten thing, he was back. He decided to publish Wooten's exclusive that the couple planned to step back and go live trouble-free in Canada. They also announced, the son did the Sussex Royal Foundation launch. Now, remember, that was what Harry and Smeg had come up with to, I, I don't know, allegedly, they were just asking for a friend about how to, you know, get away with putting some money in there and, you know, not having to... Um, handle it correctly. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, allegedly, maybe. Okay. So they went to thank the high commissioner of Canada. 
Basically, let me cut through the bullshit here. They were trying to take a photo with them to promote themselves and to get attention and to show that they were serious about going to Canada. If the royal family wasn't going to speak up on their behalf, I mean, believe me, I don't think they should have. But I'm saying if in their eyes, if they felt like the royal family wasn't standing up for us, we're going to take matters into our own hands. Again, do you hear Megan's grubby little paws all, all over this? Because I do. So despite the imminent negotiations with the Queen, their office, the Sussex office, issued a statement on Instagram, sure, Sussex, oh, but again, remember, we just came off where Megan was pretending she never did social media online, she never looked at it or anything, sure, yeah. This goes right along with that. Um, So they made this announcement that they would be stepping back as full-time senior royals and plan to, quote, carve out a progressive new role within the institution. You guys, their idea of a progressive new role in the institution is not doing shit, getting paid a lot of money, and becoming corporate spokespeople. We'll get into that, but... That's their idea of a new role, apparently. They also referred to the launch of a new charitable entity. Again, talking about that Sussex Royal. So this is about the time when Megxit was coined. And Megan wanted to take control of the situation. She booked a return to Vancouver the next day. She was pissed. So William was upset and Charles was exasperated. Harry later complained that the word Megxit, get ready for this, was a term of misogynistic abuse. What are we talking about? Couldn't it just be what it is, a play on the word Brexit that had been so much in the media, right? And then they're leaving. So Megxit just seems like the low-hanging fruit. But nope, not the perpetual victims, Harry and Meghan. They have to make it about themselves and make it how it's a misogynistic term. Are you not a man, Harry? Is that It was used at you, too. <laughs> So, oh my God, maybe the cold medicine's making me loopy, but what are they talking about? All right, so the royal family needed to address this. Tom Bauer referred to it as an uncontrolled exploitation of their privileges and their titles. Ugh, you guys, I, if there was something I could put my signature on to take those titles away, I think that's the first thing that should have gone. So according to the book, Harry had inherited $27 million from Diana, Meg, he, I don't know how he knew, he assumed had probably saved about $1 million from her Suits career, but it was not sufficient enough to sustain their lives. Can you imagine? $28 million, not su- su- sufficient enough to, to sustain their lives. I, I can't even wrap my head around that. So the royals were in a predicament, right? If they let them keep their titles without responsibility, then they were afraid that Her- Harold and Fraud were going to, Hank and Skank, were going to try to spend this, that they were the victims of racism and this was their prize on the way out, not the actual situation where they were just not interested in being working members and they wanted all the privileges. <sighs> Again, throwing out the ist words, so obnoxious. So 13th of January rolls around and Harry decides to go to Norfolk, which is, of course, Sandringham. He wanted Meghan there on Zoom. And I love this. The royal family's like, eh, eh, I don't think so. They were afraid she was going to try to broadcast it to other people or try to record it. Yep. Sounds like Schmeg. So at Sandringham, of course, was the queen. It was William. It was Charles. They had some advisors there whole bunch of people. Tom in his book states at this point, they all believe that Megan was controlling Harry. Uh, you think? No, I can cut through that. What that means is they knew how stupid Harry was and that she had him by the nuts. So, so there's that. Harry wanted to persuade the queen that they could serve the monarch and the royal family in a semi-detached manner from Canada. Again, this is your teenager saying, I'm leaving. That's it. But you still have to support me. What? No, I don't. Okay. So Harry didn't realize that half in and half out was not possible. I would say they weren't even looking to be half in and half out. I think it sounded like they only wanted to do like, I don't know, come to events, you know, right? (laughs) And be flown in. 
for big events. Otherwise, they wanted no part. Tom Bauer goes on to say that Harry says at this point that he and Megan, quote, wouldn't be brand ambassadors of corporations. No, 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 we would never. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because we know how this goes and, and we'll get into it. But basically, immediately he turns around and does exactly that. He claims that he offered to personally pay for security. That is not what he's told us. He goes on and on, right, about how they would no longer protect us. They wouldn't. Remember, he did that whole thing. They wouldn't withdraw protection, would they? I'm being dramatic because that's exactly how he speaks. So this is where Tom Bauer goes into the press who had previously loved them when they were getting married, started to say, yeah, what the hell's their problem? Like, they're okay. People seem to be okay with them leaving, but they're not okay publicly funding them and for them to keep their titles. Hello? And apparently this shocked Harold and Fraud. Again, it's just further proof that they live in their own little bubble. So Tom Bauer brings up this Tony Parsons of The Sun he had apparently started out singing their praises and talking about how much he adored the couple. But then when this came out, he was just astonished how far they've fallen. Many of the, many of us would be happy to see the back of them as they leave. They call out the obnoxious behavior and how they demanded to have their cake and eat it too. And then Oprah, again, see how this all fits back? Oprah, Gail, Harry, and Meghan. They're all, whatever analogy you want to throw in here, like making money, right? They're all kissing each other's asses and making a whole bunch of money. So Oprah's magazine, Oprah magazine, um, put out a thing saying, Meghan hasn't been made to feel welcome by the royal family. So again, it keeps Oprah in the headlines. It keeps her magazine in the headlines. It keeps Megan in the headlines, all laying the foundation for the interview to come. See how conveniently that works out for them? Wow, I'm shocked. I hope you can read the sarcasm through the cold medicine. So Megan's plan, according to Tom Bauer, was to expose the royal family as, you ready? You're going to be shocked. Racist. If her demands weren't met, is that not extortion if you've ever heard it? That is awful. Just awful. What's the word? Blackmail, extortion, all of it. All the terrible things. That's what that is. So that Tom Bradby guy, the more I learned about him, the more I dislike. He's the guy that interviewed Megan, did that interview where she was pretending to cry saying, nobody's asked me how I'm doing, which some of you, I mean, you guys are the best. You pointed out my comments. She had a full face of makeup on for engagements that day, but then wiped it off to look more sad in that interview. Nice, huh? So he wrote about William not being welcoming and that they escaped from the quote, poisonous palace. So again, it suits his narrative and also builds his interview back up, right? And of course, we know since then they've done another interview. So it's interesting how they're all, I'm really bad with these analogies. What is it? Greasing each other's pockets? That. <laughs> they're all getting paid, right? Then the media starts to, the ones that are siding with Harold and Fraud, which I don't understand how anybody does at this point, but they do. Uh, they blamed Mexit on structural racism and sexism. It couldn't possibly be that these two are the absolute worst, didn't actually want to take the job seriously. Tom Bauer even refers to the Duchess's lack of interest in her duties, but that's all irrelevant. No, no, no. It's all the isms and the is that they like to blame so much. So much talk of her race. And this is where Harry, Harry and Meghan, Hank and Skank, Carol and Fraud, start to blame Britain's intolerance. I'm using Joey's quotation marks again. How about that? So if you don't support these people, you're intolerant? I just think it's completely irresponsible and disgusting to make blanket statements like that. It doesn't matter somebody's gender, race, etc. You can be an asshole regardless, right? <laughs> and that's exactly what they're being and so much worse. And yet, if you call them out on it, here we are back at the ist words again. It's so obnoxious and it just shows that they can't think for themselves. Let's just go on this group think idea. Oh, God, it's just disgusting. Okay, so the queen was trying to keep things civil and said, hey, let's try this trial separation sometime in Canada, sometime in Britain. 
Let's split some time up here. Tom Bauer points out that Megan at this time felt no qualms about who she who she was insulting. They call this the Sandringham Agreement, this part-time Britain, part-time Canada thing. The Sussexes would no longer be working members of the royal family. They would no longer use HRH titles. I'm throwing my hands up in the air just like you are. I, I can hear you screaming at your TV too. I hear it. Harry would lose his military roles. Megan would lose her role within the Commonwealth and that they would be forced to repay the $2.4 million they spent on whatever, redoing Frogmore. And in one year, they would lose all financial support. So I would say, what the crap are we doing here? Why do they even get a year of financial support? To stomp on everybody on the way out and still get a year of financial support is way too generous for these two. Harry and Meghan assured the family they would never use royal titles to make money. I'm laughing because that's all they have done. How about the question that Anderson Cooper asked about giving up royal, I think it was him that asked that, royal titles, and Harry just kind of sidestepped it and said, well, what difference would that make? It's because you're banking on it, you butthead. So they agreed to express mutual platitudes of each other. Harry and Meghan and the royal family would be nice to each other in the press, uphold the values of Her Majesty. Harry then returned to Vancouver. He and Meghan shared a sense of grievance. Again, where have we heard this? Of course they do. They get all these things that they don't deserve, and yet they're still the ones holding a grudge and having a grievance. So early February, the protection officers that were there for Harry and Meghan informed the palace that Meghan was house hunting in Malibu. Tom Bauer says that living in Canada was a smokescreen. According to the Sussex version, security was going to be removed with short notice, but their house was not safe. It was a lack of support and understanding. So again, they're continuing to smear the royal family, and we just found out all the ways that the royal family was continued to support these assholes. The principal enemy that they seem to have was very unclear. It seems to be the tabloids, and Harry kept speaking in these nonsensical things about standing up for what they believe. What is it that you believe? In money? Exploiting? <laughs> what is it? Reaping the benefits with no actual work? What is it that you believe in? So one of my favorite quotes from this part of the book, Tom Bauer says, and I quote, logic played no part in the Sussex's conduct. Then we find out immediately after this, Gail King, again, do you see full circle? Oprah Gail and these two. Gail King hosted a JP Morgan event in Miami. Guess which ginger was flown out from Vancouver and earned $1 million for exposing his, quote, wounds. <laughs> yep. So just what they said they weren't going to do, using their titles, exploiting the family for money, look what they've done. He preached about having no regrets, leaving the royal family, and then he had to, quote, protect his family from what? He doesn't know. From not making a shitload of money and selling his family out? I guess that's it. So the exact thing he's promising not to do, he does. He uses the royal titles to make money. He's a corporate shill. There you go. The palace wanted them to shut down the Sussex Royal brand. You can imagine how that went. The 31st of March, the Sussexes made this announcement that they were stepping down from being working royals. Whatever they were pretending to be at that time, they were no longer pretending. Well, Canada withdrew their funding for protection. So again, these two demanding everything, but... <laughs> um, but you can expect nothing in return from them. They're stepping down, but they still expected that the funding from the Canadians would be there. Tom Bauer estimated to maintain their lifestyle, they would need to earn about $10 million a year. I'm thinking it's probably more than that since they've made their way to Montecito. So in a statement, they took a swipe at the Queen, who they say had no jurisdiction over the word, quote, royal. Harry was HRH by birth. This is where I hate them. That is awful. They're still using these titles, and I, I just wish there was something that could be, there's got to be something that could be done, and I wish that Charles would do it. 
Megan told her people in California to find a director for Archwell, and that is how that chapter ends. So we are going to dive into chapter 33, Farewell, on the next episode. Guys, this is some juicy stuff. These two are the worst. Every time I think I can't hate them more, they go and do stuff like this and remind me, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I hate them even more. They are truly terrible people. The most selfish entitled people I believe I've ever heard about. They really are pieces of work and pieces of shit. So there's that. Guys, I apologize for my cold voice. I'm getting over it. I should be back to normal, hopefully on tomorrow's recording. Thank you for sticking with me and all the kind wishes. I really appreciate it. I do encourage you to check out Patreon, patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I got so much fun stuff going on over there. I really do. Jay and I keep putting out more episodes where we deep dive things like the podcast, the engagement interviews. We're getting into the Oprah, breaking that up into episodes and having so much fun. So check that out. But I have to call out. Shout out my executive producers. I love you guys so much. I really appreciate all the support from you. So I want to say a huge thank you to Kristen, to Linda, to Melissa, Paige, Teresa, Mary, Amy, Mr. K, K, Shauna, Brenda, Aaron and Frank, Kristen, the Ann M, and Ann H., Amanda, Karen, we have two Karen. So this one is Karen with an I. Uh, Real Life Jolie, I hope I'm saying that one right. K King, Glennis, also known as Glenn, uh, Sugar Hiccup, and Karen with an E. I have two Karens, two Amy, so I'm trying to keep you guys straight. Thank you all so much for being my executive producers. If more of you have signed up, Since this recording, I will get you in the next recording or one soon after. Thank you so much for being here and supporting. I truly appreciate you. I couldn't do this without you. Every penny is going into our coronation coverage. I can't wait for that. Thank you guys for being here and being patient with me as I deal with this nonsense. Uh, Still have the Recollections May Vary merch. Check that out. It's been so popular. It blew my mind. Thank you so much for all that. And Hank and Skank stuff is still there as well as Make It Make Sense. So check that out. Guys, thanks for everything. I can't wait to dive into more revenge. (laughs) I can almost say it. Almost. Have a wonderful evening and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.